Well, greetings once again, friends around the world. Here is another message from me, uh, indeed, for all of you who are former members of the Worldwide Church of God. I am very overwhelmed. I've been very overwhelmed with response to my previous message. I really, even more people that more of you who are former members of the Worldwide Church of God have contacted me to say that you are here, that you are, you appreciate what, you know, what, what my messages are giving to you and that you're very happy to be here. Again, I'm very privileged to see you all here because, uh, the primary purpose of my, uh, of my channel, when I founded the channel and when I started spreading the good news, the gospel, the true gospel of Jesus Christ to the world was exactly to reach the world. But a little did I realize that so many of you would recognize indeed that that's the message that you uh, you heard once upon a time once in your life and that you believed it and that you repented and uh, uh, and believed the gospel and uh, that you were baptized and of course little did you realize that in your rough uh, spiritual life you would be probably used misused abused by various hierarchical authorities and then that the following the 1995, there would be a total scattering and destruction of what once was a very mighty structure called the Worldwide Church of God. Uh, so I didn't realize you would be here, but I'm very happy because back in those days, as I told you in my previous message tailored to you, back in those days, uh, I was it was hurting me so badly that people would be now scattered, confused, no longer have a strong, solid fellowship uh, with common beliefs and uh, led by the Spirit of God that they could just all move forward. Nevertheless, you know, when I think back, brethren, God allowed that scattering for a certain purpose. There were so many wrong things happening in the hierarchy. There were so many haughty and, arg and, and, and arrogant ministers. Uh, later, <laughs> when I learned... When uh, at what one, one day, perhaps even to these days, uh, one of those churches of God is the uh, the, the, the the most numerous. Uh, well, they began in Indiana, Indianapolis, with uh, with a conference. But later, one one participant of that conference, when he revealed that back in those conference, they quickly kind of divided up who is going to have what function. That they were uh, very much into the pension funds and all of this stuff. Uh, then I realized how wrong all of that was, and uh, by the teachings and uh, and other things that those churches are doing or not doing, I realized how wrong they really are. Because all those churches have got well, not all, not all of them. I cannot say always all of them, but the vast majority of them preach to the Americans, of course, because they want to have the American membership with steady income, so that they can be filling their funds and so on and so forth. And that they can be using their funds and have the pension funds, etc., etc. Et well, sadly, my dear friends, that's all going to crumble very soon, because obviously those churches have forgotten what is prophesied for Britain and America in prophecy. And you can hear about that on my channel, of course. And you certainly could hear about that back in those days when Mr. Herbert Armstrong was alive. Uh, those churches have done something terribly as well, of which I need to indeed warn you. And I think it's my duty to warn you because uh, a small little flock here in Serbia, a small, there are few of us who are faithful, we have realized what kind of crime those churches, various churches of God to which you did not associate, and it's good that you did not, go and join them, a, very, a huge crime that they've done against, against God's truth. But before that, I want to once again remind you what I told you in my first message tailored for you. You are still God's people. You are God's people. You are still part of the spiritual body of Christ as long as you continue keeping the commandments of Jesus Christ, which are the commandments of God the Father, as long as you continue to study, pray, watch. And if you want to be a Philadelphia Christian, you're supposed to be, as I mentioned, you're supposed to watch over your spiritual state because we're obviously living now in the dominant Laodicean age, Laodicean era. But you're still God's people. You still have the same responsibility that you committed to when you got baptized, the same responsibility when in faith you accepted the true Jesus Christ who died to save you from the eternal death. You have the same responsibility when you repented to God for all that you have done against Him. Against you only you have I sinned, said 
King David. The same is true for all of us. The same obligation you all have as you're accepting the Holy Spirit to lead you into all the truth and to lead you to remain faithful to the end. We have to still have to endure to the end. And then, as Jesus Christ said, then those who endure to the end will be saved. We still have to endure to the end. And you are God's people. And because you are God's people, wherever you are, you still have the same obligation, the same things that you committed to at your baptism, including enduring to the end. Uh, of course, you need to be, you need to make sure that your attitude does not become Laodicean. Uh, that your attitude does not become Laodicean, meaning that you need to have fervent love for the truth and that you can, and that you allow yourself and humble yourself enough to participate in God's work. Again, I told you, I'm not inviting you to, I told you that the, uh, the, the, the place that God led me to was the continuing church of God, which is very different from all these other churches of God. And I didn't give you many reasons because those reasons are not important. I was led to that, to that church for, the, for, for reasons. There is one reason that I, as a Christian, as your fellow brother in Christ, have to remind you of and warn you about when it comes to these other churches. That's number one. And number two, you have to also participate in work of God. If you love this channel, if this channel means to you, if this channel provides spiritual n nourishment to you, which I believe that's my goal, as many of, and, and many of you tell, tell me that it does, well, in that case, you can participate in the work of God still by because you're committed also to tithing and uh, giving offerings at holidays. You have now the place to uh, to do it because this place uses those things to reach the world. While these other churches of God are mostly, most overwhelming majority, preached to America or to rich nations of the Anglo-Saxon world, I, as a, as a as a, as an elder, as a Lord of Christ. To all the world, I preach to all the world, I preach to the Gentiles. There needs to be enough Gentiles to come in, as it says in Romans 11. Uh, enough number, the, uh, the sufficient number of Gentiles needs to come in as well. That's why God blinded the house of Israel. If you remember what it says in Romans chapter 11, if you don't, go ahead and remind yourselves. So I preach to the whole world, the whole world, to both Gentiles and Israelites by flesh. And I preach the truth as it is. No, it's not always the same things that Mr. Armstrong preached because many things happened, many things changed, many things developed. There are things that Mr. Armstrong didn't look into, there are things we understand much better now, and that's simply the case. Because what is the point of growing in grace and knowledge unless we have new knowledge and new understanding? However, when it comes to doctrines, basic doctrines of the Bible, like keeping the law, the Ten Commandments, belief in Jesus Christ, the Messiah... Uh, keeping, of course, the seventh day, uh, Sabbath, holidays, and all the other basic doctrines that you have been taught in the past, and you would probably still keep them, I still hold on to the same of those doctrines. The area where things have changed in my understanding are basically uh, prophecies, the prophecies, and that's all. But you are still God's people. You have obligation. You have the same things that you committed to. They're still valid. And again, if you have nowhere else to turn after all, if you don't trust anyone, but you trust here this channel, yes, you can participate still in the work of God because, brethren, I am preaching the same truth. I'm preaching all the things as I understand from the Bible. I'm preaching them with full freedom and nobody is here to censor me. And I don't care what is uh, what the forces of this world may think or what the Laodicean churches of God may think because they've committed one huge crime and that contributes to what I want to tell you today. Uh, and I was reminded of this crime, thankfully, because of an email that came to me from uh, one dear lady from Kentucky, and I'm so glad, sister, that you have sent this mail to me. She wrote to me, among other things, she said um, that she was attending WCG in 7, 1972, that she was at the age of 18 when she began and to attend the church. And despite the ups and downs, uh, she remained, she thinks that she remained faithful to the word of God. She also mentioned that the hierarchy is the biggest problem the body of Christ the, uh, has to overcome. Uh, and I do agree with her, yes. The hierarchy, the wrong hierarchy, and the misuse of hierarchy, and the way how the WCG was was uh, promoting the hierarchy, and uh, the, the arrogance of ministers who think that they know everything in the best. Uh, yes, that hierarchy, yes, was, has been 
most likely the biggest problem to the body of Christ that needed to be overcome. And as I told you in my previous message, that was the biggest problem to me. For a long time, I didn't want to join any hierarchical church of God. But at the same time, I realized that, you know, I could not also go into the chaos because the church of God is not like a hippie camp where everybody just lives by his own rules. You know, there are certain things that people need to understand and need to practice and need to obey so that there will be peace and order. But the misuse of the hierarchy and all kinds of crooked people into the hierarchy that we all ran into, dear friends, dear brethren, yes, that was the biggest problem. And you may remember back in 1974, basically several highest-ranking uh, evangelists even left the Church of God. So you know, people can just grow. Uh, there is my one of my one of my messages on this channel on the wheat and tares. Please listen to it if you wish, because it might re explain to you why and how we had so many problems back in WCG, but even now in these various churches of God, why and how we had various problems, and how the tares were sown, remember, into the field by the by the evil one, and it was right in the midst of the field, field of God. And some people just, you know, even uh, progressed to the rank of, of, of evangelists, and at the end they were not faithful to God. <laughs> Now this wonderful lady also writes to me, I'm currently on my own again and have no intention to ever again become part of a 501c3 organization. Thank you for reminding me of this. Thank you because I completely forgot in my previous message to you, brethren, those of you who are still God's people, I forgot to tell you how this is true. And uh, this, this, this lady continues, I don't know whether it is the, that legal status that is the problem. Yes, it is, I say, or the organizational structure itself. No. No, it is both there is problem, uh, but the, the hierarchy is not the main problem. Uh, my dear sister and my dear brethren around the world. No, this is what you mentioned. 501c3 organization. And this lady says, anytime you put anything or anyone between yourself and God, the Father, there can be problems. Yes, 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 and million times yes. And let me now explain to you this 501c organization that all these churches of God, as far as I know, except for one, which is the Continuing Church of God, do use. By the way, I need to tell you, the Continuing Church of God itself does not have any doctrinal committee, does not have any boards of directors and all of that rubbish. There is a hierarchy indeed. There is one overseer, let's call him overseer of the, of the church. You know, he is the one who is teaching us the doctrine. He is the one who is giving us the understanding. He is the one who is giving us the messages, but he is not lording it all over us. I myself am completely free to have my own channel, this one, and I'm completely free to do whatever God leads me to do for the benefit of his people. We believe that all of uh, all people who keep God's commandments and have the testimony of Jesus Christ that they are our brethren. Whether some of them are Laodicean, some of them might be living in whatever kind of uh, errors, that they are still our brethren. We only have the two churches of God that we cannot accept for God's people. One is the so-called Philadelphia Church of God, whose who's, uh, uh, chief officer of whose who's leader has been giving various false uh, uh, prophet, pro prophecies, false prophecies, which he never repented of. And the other one is that, that other church, so-called restored church of God, whose president always keeps and ask, he, he uh, keeps asking church members, his church members, to send him all of their money, to sp sell all of their properties and sell all the money to the church, which is tragic, which is terrible, which is awful. Those two churches we cannot consider to be God's people because they're sadly under the under the uh, unconverted bad people. I myself have also I myself have also uh, uh, a suspicion that my former church aff affiliation. I, I have two of those. After the breakaway breakup of the of the worldwide church of God, I was in two other churches of God, both hierarchical. Well, one was not really hierarchical. The first one, it just had a committee to rule the things, and it allowed voting at their conference and all that stuff, you know. And the other one later was really, you know, hierarchical, strict, but it was f full of abusive people, and uh, it changed some basic doctrines like the uh, like the identity of Israel and like the uh, seven church eras. And I really wonder if there are some people there who are really 
not converted, but you know, let's because that very group just acts as a secret sect, so uh, they're not even perhaps worthy of any mention anyway. But I'm speaking mostly now of the uh, uh, those. I'm speaking of all these other churches of God that I already mentioned that he, as a vast majority proclaim the truth, much of the truth, but not the whole truth. They proclaim it to the to the to the world. However, they don't do it freely because, as this wonderful lady wrote, uh, they're organized, they're registered as part of 501c3 organization. Now, uh, some of us here in Serbia were in one of those churches of God, hierarchical, registered under this 503c organization. This is terrible because this is exactly, that exactly does what this lady said. Anytime you put anything on anyone between yourself and God, the Father, there can be problems. Not that there can be, my dear sister, there are terrible problems with those churches. Because why? Because we realized, uh, we had some, in the past, while we were part of that, of that organization, uh, when we would be asking for visas, for example, to go to a foreign country, England in this case, or United Kingdom, uh, we had to get visa, but we had to get visa, and uh, the, the church organization to which we belonged would send us various documents that we had to present to the British authorities at the British Embassy and show them uh, the reason why we are that there is a religious organization, well, it wasn't religious, by the way, and that we are going to that, you know, we are going to keep the feast or have a festival of a convention, whatever. We realized because by those documents that we received, we realized because in the documents there will be a number of people, and we realized that that church, just like under the 503C, whatever, the church was registered as a charitable organization. Could you believe that? A charitable organization, and being a charitable organization, that church. When my one of our one of our members here just kind of researched about that, that meant that those churches actually receive donations or money from the state, and they can function, but they can fulfill certain requirements of the state. Like, you know, they would need to have certain educational programs, whatever, and that explains why they have these summer education camps, youth camps, and all that rubbish. So they function as a charity, and they're tied by this 503C organization, what they're going to preach. What they're going to, they're not allowed to freely preach on the public, to preach about, for example, that, you know, gay marriages are wrong, or that uh, abortion is terrible. You know, they have to tailor their messages to this registration, to this registration, to the requirements of the state. Otherwise, they will not be receiving any donations from the state. Now, what kind of church of God is that, friends? That's a Laodicean attitude, if nothing. So you preach things. You're supposed to preach the, the good news of the coming kingdom of God, which is going to annul all of the states of this world and establish the, its own rule, its own government under the whole world. And you are, so under this registration, receiving donation from those very states that are supposed to be done away with once Christ comes back. Then not only that, but you are not permitted to preach certain things. So... Sabbath after Sabbath, you receive nothing from food nourishment because you have to be, you have to be kind of toned down. You cannot be preaching the prophecies because it's too negative. You cannot be saying that there is an invasion from Germany coming into Europe, from Europe into America and the Anglo-Saxon world because no, your countries do not allow that under this registration. You cannot be freely preaching against the gay marriages, abortion, etc., etc., because the governments are not going to be, to be happy. They're going to cut you off. There'll be no donation. How? Horrible. How loud is he and that is? And basically virtually all of those churches have got out. They are exactly registered as this wonderful lady pointed out. They are, you know, 501C3, uh, you know, registration. And according to the US law, you have to be very careful what you preach. And then when they come, and not only that, but they waste their time and their money on television. The continuing church of God to which I belong, I have to tell you, I, have, I don't go to television. I don't pay any one single penny for television. We even don't pay one single penny to go to the places of this world to keep the Sabbath, brethren, the holidays. No, not at all. Except for the, uh, for the Feast of Tabernacles when we have to leave our homes. 
We keep all the Sabbath in our homes. When two, three, five or more of us need to gather, we gather in our homes. Or, we, since we are scattered, in Serbia we have only five baptized believers, we are kind of scattered, we do have uh, two, three, uh, we have three um, uh, prospective members, we are all scattered, we use internet to get connected and to serve God. But we never, we have never given, nowhere in the world has one single church, church continuing Church of God member has given one single penny to the facilities of this world to keep the Sabbath, not at all. That's useless. Our overseer does not receive the salary from the church at all. He has his own business. He's a doctor of natural medicine. He has a very successful of his own business and all the money, monies that the church receives from the tithes and the offerings, all that money is being given to various poor parts of the world, mostly in Africa, Haiti, etc., to help the work there and to help the brethren there who are faced with all kinds of problems, including hunger, especially in Africa. That's all. And I can tell you that with totally clear conscience. And no, it's not, that church is not registered as 503B, as a 501C3. And as I told you, that church simply is not dependent on what it is going to preach on the state and the government. In fact, we have been censored on various occasions by the very authorities on YouTube and other uh, platforms because we preach against all these horrible things happening. You know, we were preaching against Disney, new Disney plan and program. We were censored. We Once we preached against gay marriages, we were censored. We were censored because, you know, we are not going to be submitted to the state and state requirements so they will be receiving donations from those countries. How terrible that is. Uh, I'm not really, I'm not uh, so uh, skilled at your legal system in America. I'm just going to read to you what is, the, for example, the Continued Church of God, what is it registered under? The registration is simple. I'm just reading from one of the one of the publications. It's called the uh, Continuing Church of God and Successor, a Corporation Soul. Then there is the uh, there is the address, and it's created in California, United States. So, uh, Continuing Church of God and Successor, a Corporation Soul. That's it. No dependence on the state, no reliance on the government. What the church is going to preach, and we have not wasted one single dime on television public television, government-controlled television. We've been using the uh, uh, social platforms to spread the good news and to preach the full truth without any government interference because we do not allow government to come and come in and, and be between us and God. We, you know, the continuing church of God believes that it's truer than other churches of God because of that. That's so much about the continuing church of God. So, Brethren, I myself am not part of any, unlike in the past, of any 501c3 organization. And I want to encourage you in this message, thanks for this sister who has reminded me, please do not join their churches. Because they're registered as charities, not as churches, not as whatever, they're just registered as charities. Being charities, they receive donations from the state. What is that and materialism and Laodiceanism? And they, because of their reliance on the states and because they're charities, they cannot preach the full truth of God at all. They have to uh, tone down and they have to adjust their preaching to the requirements of those governments and states. So they're hypocrites. They call themselves churches of God. In the meantime, they are charities dependent on government governments of this world. They have to give... They have to give reports to those governments. They have to have certain youth camps, education stuff, this, that, and the other to fulfill the requirements of the state. And that's terrible. Brethren, please do not join them. I'm glad that you're not part of them. And I want to encourage them, encourage all of you to stay away from them. I mentioned to you in, in, in the previous uh, program, if any of you feel any need to come among the members who gather at the feast or at the Sabbath, whatever, when it comes to the continued Church of God, you are welcome. Nobody will, is going to be convincing you to come and join us. And nobody is going to be uh, pressuring you to, you know, accept this, that, or the other. You have to, your, your own salvation is, uh, is your, it's your choice. It's uh, your salvation is personal thing. 
between you and God and only you are responsible for that. We do re regard you, I regard you as brethren, of course, and I'm so thankful and I'm so privileged that so many of you have found your way to this channel and found your spiritual home in a sense. That's brilliant. That's wonderful. That's how Christ would have it. And I'm, I'm equally sad God is certainly angry at those false shepherds of Israel. It described in Ezekiel chapter 34, those who clothe themselves with wool, but you know, they don't care about for the sheep. That's terrible. Clothing themselves with the wool has a connotation of, uh, uh, vying and, 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 and working your way up the, up the, uh, ranks within the church. Ranks within, you might say, hierarchy. And they don't care about the flock. I'm sure that some of you, if not if not many of you, if not most of you, have had some problems and some terrible experiences with such people. Yes, there are some people. I've seen them uh, back in 1995 in Ambassador. Those, you know, who are just looking how they can take approach now, take approach, take advantage of the fact that there are those of us who did not accept those changes and now within their hierarchy they could now become heroes by reporting us to the... Uh, to the authorities within the church and kind of persecuting us. Such people exist even to this day in these various churches of God. But the problem, this wonderful lady has said, I don't know if the problem is their registration or, you know, or, 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 or the, their legal status or organizational structure itself. Uh, I would say both. Organizational structure which has abusive, reckless, arrogant ministers who think they know all the things the best in the world. I don't know all the things the best in the world. I cannot tell you all of you what you will be doing in Michigan and Kentucky and how you can organize this, that and the other in Africa, in Haiti, in New Zealand because I don't live in those places. I can give you some spiritual advice. I can give you a creative idea about certain things. But, you know, I cannot be ruling your lives and, and, and telling you, advising you what to do in certain situations. You know what? There are situations many people face in the world. There is a black market in some places. You cannot obtain milk for your children, for example, unless you go to the black market. Is that right? No, it's wrong. But what is more important? To have that milk, even from the black market, because that's the only way you can get it in a certain country, or to let your child starve, starve to death, for example. You know, so you cannot be, I cannot be so dumb to think that I know all the answers to all the questions of this world. No, I don't. And I can give you an example how recently with my friend Bob Thiel, who is the doctor of natural medicine, uh, I've been overcoming some stupid, idiotic bureaucracies of the United States. And only because I'm not a United States national, my signature, I'm a vice president of that uh, company that he has, that uh, is Food Research International Company, and he, he does, he produces supplements, very healthy, good supplements, food supplements. Only my signature, because I'm a foreign national, will help him continue to produce certain supplements caught because he needs to prove that that's really cod, even though from the FDI, from the very table in the laboratory of the FDI, he gets those cod products. Yeah, well, now he has to prove them that it's really cod. How stupid they're actually trying to actually get him out of business. That's what they try. But because I'm a foreign national, I can, my signature is going to make things, <laughs> make things reliable. You know, the government is going to, the American government is going to accept it and say, oh, okay, well, yeah, that must be cod really. I mean, how stupid that is. Anyway, but back to the point. These, all these churches of God that you did not join are hypocrites. They're registered as charities. They give reports to the government. They've placed thus government between themselves and God. Yes, indeed. That's the case. And I'm glad you did not join them. I'm not part, I'm no longer part of those churches. I certainly do want to, brethren, wherever you are, I want to encourage you not to go and join their churches. If you at any point want to come to you know, to the church that I mentioned, where I was ordained an elder, where you, if you want to come and check it out in, in a good sense, want to attend the services, the feast, you're welcome to, nobody's going to put any pressure on you, you're welcome. We even have a policy that even though we even tolerate if some members may have some somewhat somewhere different belief or different conviction, because, you know, we do tolerate as long as those members do not cause division and preach those things, we're happy with that. We consider other people, even those who are not joined with other churches, brethren, you are brethren. Again, as I told you, you are still God's people. 
you still have the same responsibility that you committed to at your baptism. Please endure to the end. And you might say, well, okay, we didn't join any of the churches. Have we done the right? Yes, you have. You have done exactly the right choice because you did not know, perhaps until now, that these churches are registered as, as charities. We have seen that in the documents that we had to present to the British Embassy. Those churches registered the charities, report to the chair, uh, to the governments. Uh, they cannot preach freely all the truth for the truth. They have to tone down and adjust their preaching to the governments, their governments. So they're hypocrites and they're Laodiceans. Exactly. That's one reason why they're Laodiceans. Because if you cannot preach the full truth, if, you, if you're going to fervently preach the full truth of the Bible, what else are you? And if you're having... You're preaching the coming of the Christ that is going to, who is going to uh, do away with all of these governments and you're receiving donations from that government. What is that? Isn't that Laodicean? You're one, with one foot you're into the world, with another foot you're into the church. No, it doesn't work that way and it is not going to work that way. That's why God is sending God tribulation to be the last trial, the last, uh, the last, uh, how can I call it? Uh, the last trial and the last possibility for those lukewarm Laodiceans to finally decide whether they go to the world and lose their salvation and stay faithful to the church and inherit the eternal life, real life. So those churches of God that you all know about are registered under this 501c3, 501c3 organization, that's their legal status, that's wrong. They have not told you that they are registered as as, uh, as charities, that they have to report to the secular authorities and that they receive donations from the, those governments. Brethren, that's the case. We have seen it with our own eyes here in Serbia. And yes, I am indeed, I felt now after receiving this wonderful email, I felt my duty was to warn you against those churches and to tell you do not join them and do not go into the Laodicean attitude with them. Stay where you are. No, don't join them at all. You can still, now you see, you can still, as I mentioned to you, participate in the work of God. You can still contribute to the work of God. You can still endure to the end. But no, you don't need to join those Laodicean churches that will just uh, drag you into this legal status that is completely Laodicean. As the lady said, anytime you put in anyone or anything between yourself and God, the Father, there can be problems. Yes, that's the main problem because the first commandment says that we are to love God with all of our mind, heart and stuff. So those churches obviously love money and donations from their countries and the governments, but they supposedly love God, but they never tell you that they're charities who receive donations from the states. Now, this lady has written something else which I think is very worthy of mentioning. I appreciate everything I was taught in WCG, namely how to study the Bible, not to believe any man, but to do my own homework, etc. I do not believe Herbert Armstrong knew everything. Exactly, he didn't. And that nothing he taught can be changed. Yes, of course. Yeah, certain things that he you know, didn't go much into details, and we have changed various wrong understandings of the prophecies, as I mentioned to you. She also says there are some things he did not know, yes, absolutely, or just did not address, so there is always room for growth and increased uh, understanding as time goes on. Absolutely, I cannot agree more. Because what's the point of the, what's the point of the uh, instruction that we should grow in grace and knowledge unless there is room to grow, room to have increased understanding as time goes on? You're absolutely right. Yes, and we have increased understanding as time goes on because things have changed. Mr. Armstrong lived in different times, well, in different times, and therefore we just keep growing in grace and knowledge, understanding as time goes on. Then she says, but when that growth comes across something new or just a little different, it is not able to be discussed in the organization meeting. Well, perhaps not to where, where you are. In our case, we have been so free that some of our members, we got together after services, some of our members came up to tell, the, tell us their most terrible challenges and problems and things. And, of course, we nobody con condemned them. And I, as an elder, do not allow anyone to be condemned. Because Christian life is a life of struggle against sin. Satan knows who we are. We are his target. And he throws at us all kind of troubles, trials, horrible thoughts, horrible feelings we are to fight and some people just need encouragement and we were very open in our discussions in fact we i still remember we had a 
one meeting in which one in which one baptized member uh, mentioned that he was constantly challenged by homosexual feelings and homosexual desires and stuff, and nobody con- condemned him. And in fact, as I said, I said as an elder very clearly that I would not allow any condemnation because every sin before God is the same, no matter how certain sins to me or to you or to somebody else may seem more gruesome and more terrible, all the sins are exactly the same. And so we discussed very sincerely those things or there were never questions. She, this lady says, they would look at me with glazed eyes, dropped jaw and the look I can't believe you just asked that question. Like the time I asked a question that was not on the prepared list of Bible study questions. (laughs) That's that's funny, you know. Yeah, obviously anybody can ask me any question. If I don't know, I can refer them to to somebody above me. That's my friend Bob Thiel anyway, whom I call Bob Thiel, as you mentioned. I go and call him Mr. Bob Thiel. All those titles are not among us. And I also do not allow people to give me any silly titles. Not even sir. That's so horrible. That looks like having a title of a slave owner. Sir. Well, oh, it's part of our culture. I don't care. It's part of whoever culture. To me, it's offensive. I don't allow it. You can call me by nickname, Sasha. You can call me, uh, you can call me by my nickname or by my name. But, you know, titles, I do not stand titles. We're all the same equal before God. Anyway, so please never call me Mr., never call me Sir, and never give me any of that stupid title that I certainly do not want, neither do I deserve it. And uh, she said, so uh, we don't have any uh, Bible studies, we don't have any prepared, uh, you know, study questions. The Bible studies are given by the overseer and by me on on um, social platforms that's it if somebody has a question he can send those questions we can we can even discuss things over skype if need be but that's about it i mean and we are not we understand that christian life is a battle we understand that you know we have sins to overcome and that's about it and then she says, so thank you for your video. I do watch you from time to time when I see you have something in English. Well, uh, to explain to all of you, I have uh, something in English. I have in both English and in my native tongue. I want to, uh, I, I said to you why it is good for you to participate in the work of God. Look, brethren, wherever you are, uh, my people, unlike your people, people here in Serbia, People here in former Yugoslavia, and many of the former Yugoslavia people do understand Serbian language. These people were never exposed to the true gospel. We never had believers of the Serbian or Croatian or Slovenian origin or whichever origin uh, from the Balkans. Uh, We never had people who understood the truth, who were converted and were here to preach that truth in in the tongue that the people here can understand. And to the mentality, which is very specific. So when I preach certain things in Serbian, I always tailor it for the mentality here that is dominant and that also leads people into all kinds of errors. I don't need to preach that to all of you in America or in England or or in Australia or wherever you are because you have totally different mentality, you see. But the gospel, unlike America, Australia, so in the 20th century, you were you were very blessed because you heard the, the good news because of the dedication of one man, uh, Herbert W. Armstrong, before he died. Many of you heard it. Many of you have understood it. Many of you have continued to follow the truth, and sometimes with changed understanding of things and in growth that you know nev- inevitably Christian life leads us to. But the Serbian people here have never been blessed to hear the truth of the Bible in their native tongue. Never. Only now in the 21st century there is one voice, only one voice in the wilderness, speaking them the truth of God clearly and in their native tongue, the tongue that they can understand, Serbian tongue, that's my voice. That's why this channel has messages in Serbian as well so that they couldn't stand the truth in their own language. At the same time, I thought it would be fair enough for me, since I, I, th- I, I think I have a fairly good command of English language, I thought it would be fair of me to also share the truth in English language uh, for, uh, for the blessing that you can all reap, because you 
and you, to many of you that's your native tongue, to many others that's their second language or a foreign language which they know. So uh, I'm preaching in English, of course, for your benefits, and the other messages that are not in English are in Serbian language because uh, there are several million Serbian people, there are several million others in the Balkan Peninsula that can understand Serbian language, so I felt that <coughs> since God has called me, obviously, out of this culture, out of that mentality, I felt that it was my obligation to also preach in Serbian. So thank you for understanding that, and thank you. And, you know, that's, again, Serbian people were not privileged, like unlike you, in the 20th century to hear that truth. They're hearing it only now in the 21st century, when we are in the very last days. And yes, the truth, preaching of the truth, certainly does exert costs, various costs, you know, uh, various things that I need to do and, and, and sacrifice to preach the truth. So again... Those who want to participate, those of you who don't want to join those hypocritical churches of God that are charities, but you want still still to contribute to uh, to the work, you're welcome to. You're welcome to because it will be a blessing to many people who never heard the truth until this century, and to many to the rest of humanity who can understand that can understand English, who can hear this truth. Nevertheless, continue. Those of you who are already converted, you continue to endure with that truth, and there will be others who will be hearing it for the first time. Like I have a. There is a lad in Spain, in Valencia, for the first time he has been listening to the truth. He is about 18. Uh, so there will be people who will hear this truth through this channel. And somebody needs to go to their country to baptize them. Somebody needs to eat, drink, and survive to prepare all those messages, have enough time for that. Somebody needs to, you know, deliver that message in English language. Somebody needs to counsel them over Skype. You know, somebody needs to do all that work yes i'm not it, it is tiring sometimes it's 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 exhausting sometimes but i understand god called me for that and i'm not complaining to you i'm just explaining so once again brethren at the end happy sabbath and i am uh, very glad that so many of you have written to me i'm so glad that you've come forward you've said hey we listen to your channel I'm very blessed that uh, after being scattered back in 1995, some of you have found your home here, and some of you have re recognized exactly the same voice crying out in this wilderness, the voice that was in the 20th century, the voice of Herbert Armstrong. But I have to warn you, nevertheless, I am not part of any of these 501c3 organizations called charities i'm not getting any money from the state unlike them i'm not having any pension fund or any other funds all my funds basically go for the work of god and for surviving in this terrible world and at times helping poor believers even here who cannot sometimes make the ends meet helping them make the end meet but they're not they're not very demanding they're very modest people they're doing their best but they live in a system that you cannot imagine how 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 unjust it is and how little it can provide for the true workers and so on and so forth so please wherever you are do not join these hypocritical churches of god whose legal status is charities receiving donations from the state please do not join them because they're hypocrites all of those churches of god out there except for one except for that church the continuing church of god all of these others are hypocrites, not telling you the true stuff, and at the same time being after the state funds. How hypocritical and Laodicean that is. Do not join them. Do not let them drag you into their Laodicean attitude. Brethren, stay faithful. You don't have to join them. No, not at all. Don't commit that error. Stay on your own. Stay on your, by yourself. Receive great blessings from God and continue to form the strong relationship with him Pl please pray that you'll be accounted worthy to escape the horrible great tribulation which is very soon going to happen and basically hit mostly the anglo-saxon world please also watch over your spiritual state lest you become laodiceans do not be lukewarm maintain fervor maintain zealous love for the truth zealous love for the work of god zealous love for the people of god zealous love for the truth of god and yes, indeed, you have done the right, your choice is right. You did not join all of those 503C1, uh, 501, sorry, 501C3 organizations, those charities. You don't need to join those charities because they're breaking all the time the first commandment. 
you don't want to be Laodiceans, you do not want to be into the Great Tribulation, and no, you do not want to join those Laodicean churches of God, which are actually charities receiving donations from the state. Brethren, all the best, endure to the end, be encouraged, and don't worry. There are those of us with you who, even though we are in an organized and hierarchical church, no, we don't have an abusive hierarchy, and no, we do not accept the legal status in which we're breaking the commandments of God. No, never. No, at a cost, whatever. We don't go to the television, which government owns, and government tells you that you cannot preach about this, that, and the other. We don't go on the television. We don't go on there. We don't pay one dime for their government-controlled media. We're using the uh, platforms like YouTube and so on, and I'll be doing that as well until the coming great European leader, dictator, censors me forever. But until then, you'll be listening unadulterated truth and uh, you'll be having and getting the best nourishment God can provide you through me. Thanks to him for that. Thanks to him for that great blessing. And thanks to him for gathering so many of you who are scattered, abused, kicked and maligned and misused. He brought you some and so many of you here. May the number of you, former WCG members, be greater and greater here. May they become spiritually rehabilitated and may they watch, continue to endure and watch over their state that they do not become Laodiceans and lukewarm Laodiceans and may not all any of them ever, 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 like this wonderful lady has written, may they never, ever join any Church of God whose status is 501c3, which makes them actually charities responsible to the governments with donations from the governments and having to fulfill all the requirements that the government puts before them, which actually means adulterated teachings, toned down teachings, and that they cannot preach the full truth of God. I myself will never allow myself ever to become, to come into that kind of condition. And yes, be thankful. There are a few others as well out there that will never allow the government of any country to be put between them and God. Brethren, do not join the Laodicean 501c3 charities that receive donation from the governments and have to respond and report to the governments for their work. That's horrible. They never tell you that that's, that that's how it is, but yes, we know that is how it is. Happy Sabbath. All the best. Please endure to the end. Wherever you are, stay there wherever you are. But do not stay. If you are, some of you, if you are in some of those churches, all those churches out there, please realize those churches are lying to you. They're being allowed to see them and they've put government between them and God. You, if you happen to be, any of you who are listening to this, happen to be the churches, you have no obligation whatsoever to stay in that kind of condition, in that those kind of churches, leave them with a perfectly peaceful conscience because they're lying to you and they're not churches of God truly, they're just charities relying on the government and receiving government money. How hypocritical. If those of you who are not in those churches stay away from them, those of you, if you are, beware. Beware and it is better for you to leave them as soon as possible. All the best, happy Sabbath, and you to the end, brethren. And uh, let us join in prayers that we be like the bride of Christ, unspotted and without blemish, that we can very soon become his wife.